Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to share with you my top 10 favourite books I've read so far in 2021. I cannot believe it's already June, I've sort of had like an out of body experience when the month ticked over and I was like holy heck we are in the middle of the year already but yeah I've had a really good reading year so far. I've read a grand total of let me pull up my spreadsheet. 24 books so far in 2021. That is how many books I've read, which is a really, really good reading year for me. I've read a lot of amazing books that I really want to talk about to you guys today. Without further ado, let's jump into the video and here are my top 10 favorite books I've read so far in 2021. Okay, so kicking it off with number 10, I was organized. I did actually rank all of these, so I will count down until number one. But starting with number 10, Saga Land by Richard Feidler and Kauri Guslison. I think I think I really messed up Kari's name the first time I pronounced it. I think I said Kari. I think it's more pronounced like Kauri. And this is a book that's on the Icelandic sagas. Now you guys might remember from last year that I really enjoyed reading Richard Feidler's book Ghost Empire, which was about the history of Constantinople. I adored that book and I really wanted to check out more of Richard Feidler's work. The sort of story, into, well it's not really a story, it is non-fiction, but the like narrative of the book like weaves together the real life experiences of Kauri, who is half Australian and half Icelandic, and it sort of considers his journey to like connecting with his Icelandic roots and weaves through that the history of the Icelandic sagas and also puts in a number of the sagas themselves. So the sagas are these like really big, wonderful, epic stories about like the Icelandic families. The book does an amazing job of weaving together like the real world stuff with like the really old stories, the history, and also a trip that Richard Feidler and Kauri Guslison took together to Iceland to research the sagas. So there's a lot here in this book and I just found it really wonderful and engaging. I learned so much about Iceland and Iceland's history and the sagas as well. And I just loved it so much. Like it was just such a fun read and not something I would normally pick up. I just picked up because it was another Richard Feidler book, but I did really enjoy it. So that is number 10 on my list. Okay, number nine, how could I forget? This is Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. So I read Six of Crows last year and because the Netflix TV show was coming out, I wanted to pick up Shadow and Bone, which is Leigh Bardugo's very first trilogy that she wrote. I think Shadow and Bone was her debut novel. Now I will retain that I did like Six of Crows way better than Shadow and Bone. Shadow and Bone is a series that got better as it went on. So I didn't, it's like I didn't really, really love the very first book in the series. I thought it was a little bit tropey. There were, like, I had some issues with characters, particularly Mal. He annoyed the absolute bejesus out of me. Like, God, he was so annoying. But as the series went on, it got better and better, and you could see Levi Dugo's writing improving with leaps and bounds. In leaps and bounds? How is that phrase actually said? In terms of the plot of the very first book of the series, in case you haven't read it or you haven't watched the Netflix show, basically we have our main character who is Alina. She is is fighting in the first army in a country called Ravka. Ravka. The country is split in half by this really dark magical force which is called the Shadowfold. There is one person that can take down the Shadowfold and this is the Sun Summoner and Alina while in the army with her best friend Mal tries to travel across the Shadowfold realizes that she is the Sun Summoner who can take down this horrible scary shadow in the middle of the country and then the story follows on from there. It honestly has a pretty basic plot but again I really loved book two and I especially loved book three. The Especially the last part of book three I thought was really really good good. I liked Mal's character by the end. I no longer despised him and found him annoying. Gave it, I think, the final book a 4.6 stars or something like that. Number eight on this list is Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. This is another non-fiction book which was recommended to me by one of my colleagues at work. Essentially, this is just a book about sleep and why it's important that we sleep and all of the health benefits associated with sleep. I don't think I would normally pick up a book like this that's specifically on sleep. I've never been like specifically interested in it before but my co-worker spoke so highly of this and oh my god the amount of like incredibly interesting information in this book it was just absolutely immense. I really enjoyed how factual this book felt and how engaging the writing was. I felt like I actually learned quite a bit about sleep even though it was a really enjoyable book it wasn't too dense. The author made it feel incredibly tangible for a person who doesn't have a background in science or who doesn't know anything about the science of sleep like going into it. I just learnt so very 
very much about sleep from reading this book. When we sleep, it's a really important time for storing memories and retaining information, how fundamental sleep is to especially language learning. There's so many like cool things about sleep that I didn't know until I read this book. But at the end of the day, sleep is a really important thing and I honestly felt like I gained a lot of information from this book. Oh my god, it's actually raining outside. It's like so bright because the sun is shining, but I think it is raining. On task number seven is Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. Now, I, this is another book that was recommended by actually the same colleague, but I was speaking to her about the fact that I really like Frankenstein, which is, you know, the book that sort of like birthed the science fiction genre. I said that I really wanted to read more science fiction, but I didn't really know where to start. I got recommended Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which is like a really influential book within this genre. This book is what inspired the movie Blade Runner. I think the thing that was so remarkable about this book for me was that it felt like it was written a couple of years ago, like it did not feel like it was published in 1968. This book is actually supposed to be set in 2021, which I realized after reading it, and that was just so amazing and perplexing to me. The plot of the story is we have the main character whose name is Rick Deckard. He is a bounty hunter, and because the main character is actually a bounty hunter, his goal is to find these like other really like quite advanced androids and take them out because they are dangerous to people. This novel is set in the US and it is a disturbing most of the humans of Earth have actually gone on to different planets. So I think Mars is the main planet. Most of the animals on Earth are extinct. Because of that, a lot of people, like, they can't actually afford these animals. And so they have fake ones or android animals. And his whole shtick is that he is obsessed with getting a real life animal. Um, it's getting really dark in here. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I thought the world building was very strong. I thought the characters were pretty strong. Honestly, like a lot of it was really quite funny and witty and I enjoyed it. It was just such a remarkable book and such a strong story and I still can't believe it was written in 1968. The next book on this list is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I picked this book up because I was wanting to read more books about nature that had a lot of natural imagery and I just loved this book so much. It was such a beautiful story and the imagery in this book was genuinely so incredibly stunning. This book is a is fundamentally a coming of age story. It's also a mystery. All of this is interwoven with this like amazing like naturalist imagery of the like marshes and swamps of like the east coast of the US. I think this book is set in North Carolina. So it's a really like wonderful like exploration of the nature of that area. The main character of this story is named Kaya and she's also called the marsh girl and so she is a young girl who's sort of like grown up in the marshes and she has this really remarkable journey throughout the course of the book. We start off the book in 1969 when Kaya is actually an adult and because she is the marsh girl she's sort of looked down on by all of the people in the town very much othered by the people who live there they don't trust her they don't accept her. The quarterback of the football team who's also an adult now turns up dead and all of a sudden the people of the town are blaming Kaya because she is the outcast. From that point we sort of go back in time and we see Kaya's childhood and the story is interwoven between Kaya's early childhood and the sort of murder mystery that's going on here in the present day of 1969. I yeah just loved this story. It was such a ode to nature and to the marshes and to the swampland of this region. I just thought it was really beautifully written. I loved the poetry that was strewn throughout here. thought it was a really really wonderful read and I had a lot of fun reading it. Number five on this list is On Earth Earth, we're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. This book is another library book actually. The, these two are both library books. I was like going through Ocean Vuong's Instagram stories and he was writing really beautifully about metaphor and figurative language. I hadn't actually read any of his work before but I was following him on social media and I thought oh my god like the way he is explaining metaphor is just so poignant and beautiful and he had a really interesting and wonderful take on it so um, I decided that I wanted to pick up his novel. This is his first novel. He's actually published quite a bit of poetry before this so he is actually a poet. The big criticism that this book tends to get from people is that it doesn't really have a strong plot to it. I would agree with that. <laughs> like it doesn't really have a strong plot at all. Essentially the book is a letter from a son to his mother. His mother cannot speak English and therefore she will never read the letter and they are immigrants to the US from Vietnam. Vietnam, so his mother only really speaks Vietnamese. So this is a story about the main character growing up and his family and his heritage. And again, there's not really a lot of plot here, so 
I can't really describe the plot more than that. But the imagery and the figurative language and just the writing of this story, the prose of this story are so beautiful. There was a metaphor about an eye that had me almost crying on like page 10. I was sitting in the library and I was like, I'm actually gonna start crying. Okay, so this is page 12. You once told me that the human eye is God's loneliest creation. How so much of the world passes through the pupil and still it holds nothing. The eye, alone in its socket, doesn't even know there's another one just like it, an inch away, just as hungry as empty. How sad is that? The fact that your eyes are never gonna see Oh. But yeah, basically, really, really beautiful writing. Do not go into this book expecting there to be a boatload of plot. You will not find it. Look, I love this book. I thought it was really, really amazing and I really enjoyed it. Okay, number four. This is a book I read really recently, which you guys would have seen if you saw my recent reading vlog that I filmed up in the hills. I'll put it up in the cards. Okay, before I get distracted by my feelings, I will actually describe the plot of this book. So the main character's name is Kokoro and this book is set in Tokyo and she is 14. She I think she is in junior high school and she is not able to go to school so there was an incident that happened and because of that she now stays home every day she's very lonely and bored and sad and not having a great time until the day that her mirror starts shining and she actually gets pulled into the secondary world by a little girl in a wolf mask who is called the wolf queen the space behind the mirror is actually the lonely castle seven children in total so seven junior high school students have been pulled into this world and they all have access to this castle for the next like 10 months and the wolf queen gives them the goal to find the magical wishing key only one of them can get the wish the first person who finds it can like use the wish the kids are sort of like pitted against each other to find the wishing key which is hidden somewhere in the castle when I first started reading it I found the way it was written to be just a little bit clunky like I sort of found that there was a lot of like the main character did this, the main character did that, the main character did this thing next. But as soon as I really got into the story, I really loved it. And by the end, it was a five star book for me. I adored the ending of this book. I really loved the like relationships of all the kids. I loved all of the characters. And really this story is an exploration of friendship and mental health and loneliness and bullying and all of these other really, really important things. Like I didn't exactly bawl my eyes out reading it, but I was like lying on this couch like tearing up reading the end and I just I thought it was really 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 good it was very wholesome and just an incredibly good story number three on this list is Piranesi by Susanna Clark now this is a book that we read for our book club over on Patreon. It was honestly so remarkable. I loved the writing, I loved the storytelling. It felt like a really unique fantasy, like dark academia-esque novel, and I loved it so very, very much. The main character, whose name is Piranesi, lives in a house that contains the ocean. This house is really labyrinthine. There are a lot of statues. There is one other person who lives in the house whose name is The Other. The Other is trying to research and find this like great and secret knowledge. A sort of mystery unfurls as Piranesi realizes that it's actually someone else, a third person in the house. One of the things that's quite wonderful about this story is that it's written in journal entries. So it is an epistolary novel. And there are like citations lists in this. So a lot of it feels really quite academic, but yeah, it's structured in a really interesting way. And I loved the writing. I loved the character of Piranesi. I, I felt so connected to him. It's a really unique story. And if you like Greek mythology and the myths around the labyrinth, I think you'll really like this. There were a lot of references also to C.S. Lewis in this, which I really enjoyed. Okay, moving on to number two, and this is another series. And this is the fifth season series by N.K. Jemisin. I listened to this one on audiobook and I loved every second of this series. Probably like the strongest world building I've ever read. I loved the world that this was set in. It felt so strong and real and believable. It is a fantasy. It's a sci-fi. It's dystopian. I love the magic in here. I loved the characters. Everyone felt really like nuanced and believable and a, such a good story on so, so, so very many levels. So the book has three main point of view characters. Kicking off with Essen, who is a mother. She has two little kids and and essentially the end of the world has come. The big, bad, terrible thing has happened and the world is going to end. It's a very, very stressful time. But Essun comes home and discovers that her 
her son has been murdered and her daughter has been kidnapped. And therefore Essen doesn't care about the dystopian stuff that's happening, the fact that the world is ending, all of that, because she is determined to set off and find her daughter. Again, I can't say enough how amazing the world building is here. But yes, I really loved it. It was a wonderful series. Moving on to number one, the, the book I have enjoyed so far, the very most this year. A lot of you are not gonna be surprised by this one, but it is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I, I, I know I don't shut up about this one. I know I've spoken about this, this book in like maybe every second video for the last like four months, but God, I love Love this book so incredibly much. This is another book that I read with our book club over on Patreon and I am so glad we picked this book together. Essentially for any of you who hasn't heard me gush about this book a thousand million times before, the plot of this story follows our main character whose name is Linus Baker. Linus is a caseworker for the department in charge of Dichemy. The department in charge of magical youth in this world in which magical children get put into these homes to sort of segregate them from society because they're considered to be dangerous and so Linus's job is to go and inspect these orphanages where these magical children are and make sure that they are like up to scratch and they don't need to be shut down or anything like that. He, he doesn't enjoy his job, his life is very dull and sad and grey until he takes up this one case which is like all the way at the titular house in the Cerulean Sea. He takes the train and he gets to meet these six magical children and their caretaker. This book is essentially a Pixar movie in like book form. Like it was just so colorful and bright and fun to read. The story was genuinely so wholesome and heartbreaking at the same time. Like this is a wonderful comfort read. If you're feeling a bit down or if you just want to have a good cathartic cry, the story is a wonderful exploration of fatherly love and found families and this world was so magical. I loved every part of this book. I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep talking about this book until the end of time. But yeah, I love this story so much. I really wanna buy my own physical copy because I read this on ebook. And yeah, thank you guys so very much for watching this video. Please let me know what books you guys have been reading so far this year that you enjoyed. I always want to hear more recommendations. Also, in addition to that, I am hoping to move up to posting maybe two videos a week, which is a a wild thing because for the last several years um, I've been posting every Sunday consistently and that was my thing for a very long time and I've always posted every Sunday but now I really want to start posting more consistently maybe on like a Wednesday or something like that so yeah if you guys have any like recommendations for videos if there's anything in particular you want to see that I haven't made before or stuff that you really enjoy that you want to see more of I would love to hear your feedback on that as well thank you guys so very much for watching Thank you to everyone over on Patreon who is supporting this channel. If you guys want to see behind the scenes stuff or to be a part of our cute little bookish like community over there through our book club, please feel free to go and check out Patreon. Um, and yeah, take care everyone. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.